Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. His career in sports is what legends are made of. 19 seasons in the NBA, two NCAA championships, seven all-star appearances, uh, and a spot in the NBA Hall of Fame. My God, my God. And after a stellar career on the hard court, NBA Grant, Grant Hill has conquered the world of broadcasting and business, and he's not showing any signs of letting up. Please welcome NBA Hall of Famer Grant Hill. Yay! Nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you both. Yes. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yes. Well, Mr. Grant Hill, you are sitting next to some real sports fans. Yes. Uh, we are the resident sports analysts yes, here God. on Sister Circle yes, Live. Uh, she covers basketball. I do. All right. I do. I'm a football girl. <laughs> so you're in the right spot. Well, yes. I'm a big fan of Sister Circle. Yes. So I'm glad to be here. Yes. 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 That's awesome to know. That's awesome yes. to know. So, I mean, you, we can run down your stats for days. We yes. really could. But do you ever, now that you sit and you analyze, the game. Do you ever miss truly being on the court? Well, you know, my body is expired. <laughs> the way it's set up. Yes, yeah. The I, I played as long up. as I played till I was 40. I have bad ankles, oh. bad knees. Uh, so I can't run up and down the court anymore. But mm -hmm. I do miss the brotherhood. Mm. You guys have a sisterhood here. Yes. You miss the brotherhood, being on that team, traveling, road trips. And, uh, and so I still get to be around it a little bit with television and yeah. the Atlanta Hawks. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do miss being a player, yeah. you know, in the mix with the guys. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And now you've evolved into a businessman and an owner. What What is that transition like? I mean, you're a sports analyst. I watch you all the time. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, great. Commentary. It's so good. It's so common, just matter of fact. Right. It's just the right way. Okay. Oh. But what is that? <laughs> evolution been like for you coming from you know off the hardwood now into you know, behind the hardwood mm -hmm. actually you know what it's been great I mean look I started off as a fan as a kid mm -hmm. and you dream about the game you you know dream about maybe playing the game and I was fortunate at every level to play high school college yes. NBA and to still be around the game I get paid to talk about the game yes. you that? I mean it's That's crazy too fun. and then to be on the ownership side as well so uh, I, I've just been, I'm just extremely grateful, and uh, it's, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. I enjoy it. The relationship that I have with the game of basketball mm -hmm. and all that basketball's done for me, uh, I, I just enjoy continuing to be a part of it, continue to grow the game, contribute to the game, oh, and, uh, uh, and and have a little fun along the way, uh, yeah. as you guys have fun here on TV as well. That's so, yes. that's so amazing. Yeah. Uh, yes. you, 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 so, go ahead, yeah. You have been retired for six years now? Yep. Oh, okay. Uh, what is probably the most valuable lesson that you have learned in your retirement? I know that, you know, it, a lot of times they say that retiring is very, retiring from a sport you've played your entire life yeah. can be very, very difficult, the adjustment into the new mm -hmm. way of life. So what is your, what is, what in, do you say is your most valuable lesson? Yeah, you know, that's a great point. Um, sports, for me and for most athletes, it validates you from the time mm -hmm. you start playing it in high school. But there's a, there's a window. Mm -hmm. And that window closes. I was fortunate. I played 19 years, played till I was 40. But my entire adult life, I was doing just that right there, playing basketball. Right, yeah. And now you have to transition and move on and find that next thing. And so I look at sports and basketball as a microcosm of life. Mm -hmm. And you learn about yourself, about certain values, certain qualities that transfer into everything else. And right. so I, I feel like that has helped me, but it's, it's hard. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a tough transition, mm -hmm. and I feel like I've been fortunate to do a lot of different things and keep myself busy, uh, both related to basketball, in the business world, mm -hmm. in real estate, philanthropy. Um, but a lot of the lessons that I learned yeah. really come from my experiences on the basketball yeah, field. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, uh, where we were able to be introduced to you, a lot of us is at Duke. One, yes. Arguably one of the best players Duke has yes. ever uh, hey. produced. I, I know it. <laughs> and now, who's got next? Zion has right. next. Right. Um, and there's been a huge argument about players, you know, collegiate athletes getting paid. I mean, we saw what happened with his shoe. That could have easily destroyed his career forever. forever. In retrospect, do you think college athletes deserve money? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, thankfully, he's, he's not hurt. Yes, and that yeah. could Praise have been a God. Far, far worse. Praise God, indeed. Um, I was on this Condoleezza Rice Commission last year with the NCAA. We were charged to try to figure out and make some recommendations about college basketball. Mm -hmm. The problem is there's 347 teams mm -hmm. and, or schools in the NCAA. Not every school is high profile like a Duke that generates a lot of money. Uh, so it's hard to figure out a balanced way to do that. But I do think that with name, 
image and likeness. Yes. A player mm -hmm. should be able to leverage their. Rashawn Ali, you're playing at mm -hmm. Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. You're bringing in a lot of income. A you're a superstar. You should be able to be compensated for, for that. Yeah, at least on my jersey sales. Exactly. Exactly. At the exactly. very least. At least. And, yeah. uh, and so I think we, we will get to that point. But a guy like Zion, we haven't seen him maybe ever a guy in college basketball that's generated this kind of hype. Yeah, and, yeah. he's, uh, he's phenom, something he's special. A phenom. He's, he's something yeah. special. Yes. So we, we in Duke world, we just hope he gets back, get healthy. Yeah, you know? absolutely. He's going to be all right. He's he yeah, he coming out of there anyway. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he coming out of here. Yeah, right now. But let's, let's transition on to what you're doing with the Atlanta Hawks with Black Men and the Initiative for Prostate Cancer. Talk to us about what you, what you guys are doing. Give us your 30-second answer. Yes. Yeah, no question. Uh, we're just thankful that, uh, obviously, prostate cancer in the African-American community, 76% more likely to happen. Uh, so we're just trying to uh, really emphasize the importance of black men getting mm -hmm. tested. Um, there's the PSA test, which is a blood test, not mm -hmm. the invasive test of the you know the old right. school way. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we're just using our platform to do oh, that, well, and I appreciate awesome. you sharing that. Well, thank you so much, Grant Gill. If you need more information on the NBA's historic move to raise awareness about prostate cancer in African American men, please check out the Prostate Cancer Foundation's website at pcf.org. Yes, and if you are. We're playing homage to our ancestors, honey. Yeah, that's a little new for me. The circle Welcome line. To Wakanda, honey. Now we have more time with NBA Hall of Famer Grant Hill. He has joined us at the table. Now we can just relax a little bit more. <laughs> Ooh, and talk to you uh, more about your life. And I want to start from the very beginning. You know, your parents uh, played obviously played, played such an integral role in who you are as a man. Uh, your father, NFL player. Your mom was uh, roommates with Hillary Clinton. Wow. Talk about just your upbringing and how it developed you into the man you are today. Yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've been, uh, you know, fortunate. My parents were great. Um, and as most people say about their parents, but no, I, I think I was fortunate um, being around sports, being around business, but just having parents that were engaged, um, that you know were involved in my life, um, you know, just try to teach you the right thing and, mm -hmm. and, and, and teach you right from wrong, mm -hmm. understanding the importance of character. Um, you know, my mom used to always say as a kid, and I didn't quite understand it, but she said, never fear failure. Your success mm. because more people in life are ruined Message. by success. They, oh. and, uh, and so as I've sort of gone through my journey and been exposed to success, just a lot of the you know nuggets and pearls of wisdom and yeah. so and the great thing is that they're still alive and they're still my parents. Mm -hmm. I still bum money off them. Yeah. <laughs> I do, yeah. my, mom, so my mom gives me like the hundred dollars. She goes in the bank. Like she doesn't go to ATM. She goes, she's old school, but she gives she still gives me money and uh, we go to dinner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So she's like, here, baby, here's yeah. some money. She, she, she's like, hey, she's like, I'm not on the payroll. So I can, because of that, I can tell you when you're wrong. Wow. Oh, and, uh, and that's so we good. go to dinner, she pays yeah. for dinner and everything. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. That's dope. I love that. Yeah. So I'm still on the payroll. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a beautiful thing. Well, Grant, you have been married to uh, to Mia for 20 years. Success Amen. within itself, honestly. Right, right. What, tell us a little bit about your love story and, and what keeps your bond so strong throughout mm -hmm. the years. Yeah, no, I mean, we met, uh, actually, Anita Baker introduced us mm -hmm. back oh, in uh, 1996. And uh, we've been together, married since 1999. Okay. And, uh, you know, we just kind of go about our business. I mean, really, our, our life is about our girls, about our family, about each other. Um, and um, I, I don't know, I don't, there's, there's no secret, I guess. We just oh, right we work at it. And, and there you oh, go. Beautiful. Uh, yes. there you, go. you know, we oh, work lady. at it. Uh, no, but no, it, it, it's fun. She's my best friend. And, uh, oh, you know, she's uh, actually overseas right now mm. in, uh, in London, working, touring. And it's been a blessing that she can still yes. do her, do what she loves to do. But, her new um, well, that, that, new out, yeah. that new yes. single she dropped. Yes. 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 Leave it smoking. Yeah. Yes. 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 You know, we leave it smoking every morning. morning. <laughs> when I heard that, I said, what did she say? Well, leave it smoking. Well, 20 yeah. years of marriage, you got to keep leaving it smoking. Yeah. 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 I know, that's right. I love it. And, and Stranger in My House was not about you. Yeah, no, for the record. <laughs> great song, Stranger in My House. You know, back in the day, 20 years ago, when the song would come out, everybody thought the songs were, like, real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, but no, nah, that, that was, uh, no, nah, other than the video, which I really liked. Mm, um, but no, nah, the song, song was a great song. Shep Crawford wrote that, but that yeah. wasn't about me. At least I don't think. Okay. <laughs> you know it wasn't about you. <laughs> I can't. You know, but, you know, again, 20 years, and you guys 
are such a beautiful couple. Mm -hmm. You guys compliment each other very, very mm -hmm. well. I just thought I put that out oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't be married for 20 years without its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. It's like, and you guys, you even had a health scare. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, so so how do you weather that storm? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's tough. You, you make, make it a priority. And, and certainly, you know, you have peaks and valleys. And obviously, to me, my wife has uh, MS, multiple mm -hmm. sclerosis. Mm -hmm. And I went through my situation injuries uh, in my career. And so it just either can, you know, pull you apart or bring you together. And mm -hmm. I think it kind of brought us together. And then we have kids. Like, our mm -hmm. kids, they totally humble us. Like, we're at home. Like my kid, my, my girls are like, Dad, you know, you played back when it was black and white or <laughs> you were a scrub. And then, and then my, my girls are like, Mom, you shouldn't be singing that song. Like, that's, nobody listens to your music. So they, they totally like, they do. They break us down. They break us all the way down. Yeah. Selena, tell you, we yeah. listen. They don't care. It's humbling. KJ, I love y'all. Y'all don't better know guess. who KJ think I am. I'm <laughs> right, trying to explain myself every day. KJ, <laughs> KJ, your mom, your mom is the boss. Hi. 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 Bomb. <laughs> you are in the house with all beautiful black women. You are right. outnumbered. That's every true. Day. That's it's true. It's fine. It's yeah. fine, though. Uh, but having to um, be in the industry with a woman who is also, I mean, not in the industry, but in the household with a woman who is also just as, bu just as busy in the music business. Right. What, and, and you being so busy, busy in sports, what has been some of, uh, what have been, or has mm -hmm. been some of the uh, sacrifices because my talking today is crazy. It's fine. What has been some of the sacrifices you've had to make? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's tough. You don't want to leave your kids with just anybody, but right. you all are busy. You have to go. And then how do you talk to them about the Me Too Time's Up mute movement and how to proceed as young ladies in this day and, t and age? Yeah, no, it, it's a great question. And so for me, for me personally, you know, I have a grandmother who made false teeth in New Orleans, had her own oh, business. Wow. My mom is 72 years old, still oh. works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my wife is still, I mean, I've been around strong black women right. and, and black women who work. Mm -hmm. And so I understand the challenges that go with being a working woman. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes the sacrifices that are there. And so, you know, I mean, we just work at it. We try to make it work. I mean, my schedule can be crazy, requires me to be away from home sometimes. My wife is on the road mm -hmm. right now. We're going, my daughter last night's FaceTiming the two of us. She's yeah. crying wow. about so something. Cute. And so I'm, I'm doing a game last night in Toronto and I'm FaceTiming and then my wife. Right, and, and she's and so in all the country. That's juggling tough. all of that. Yes. So there's no, like, there's no playbook. You just do what you Figure gotta do to make it work. But there are sacrifices that are made and, uh, and so, you know, we try to be engaged parents. We try to be involved. Um, we don't come in with basketball, music. We're just mom and dad. Yeah, and, uh, that's good. And so it's, it's a lot of fun. It, it's, it's the hardest thing, but it's also the most rewarding yes. and the most fulfilling thing as a parent. You guys are my marriage crush. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my marriage crush. Like you guys. Oh, is. Yeah. I know. Beautiful. Well, Grant, you know we could talk to you all day. Uh, we are so grateful that you came yes. down to the circle. And thank you for just being an amazing example of a black man. Yes. And oh. not even just a black man, but a man. Just a man. Oh, oh, yes. Just, yes. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yeah. If you want more information about the Atlanta Hawks' historic <laughs> move to raise awareness about prostate cancer, uh, please, and prostate cancer and African-American disparities, please check out the Prostate Cancer Foundation's website at pcf.org.